is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I've put together this wreath. It is an Easter wreath and I have put it together with Dollar Tree items. I don't know if I mentioned it in the video, but I probably did plenty of times. Anyway, I put this together and I used some Easter eggs right here uh, to create these flowers. It was really easy and it was a lot of fun to put it together. It took a little bit of time just in waiting for things to dry, but that was all. So let me show you what supplies I used and how I put it together. All right, so I want to start off by introducing the wreaths uh, and I have two sizes here. Both are from the Dollar Tree. I have an 18 inch wreath right here and I have a 14 inch wreath right here. Now initially I wanted to do something small, but because I think the items that I'm creating to put on the wreath are going to be pretty big, I think I need to go with the 18. But I'll put this down so that when I do create uh, the little flowers that I'm going to make, um, we can compare it so that maybe you can decide if you would rather use something smaller or something big as this. So I'm gonna put these aside and let me show you what I got to create this little flowers. All right, so to create the flowers, I'm using these, uh, they're like, I think they're plastic, but they do have some sort of like maybe a paper um, weaving on these. These are, they look like grapevine eggs and they have these two different packages. This one had a yellow, a cream, a purple, lavender, whatever you want to call it, a blue, green, and a pink on this other package. So what I did is I grabbed five of each of these uh, sets of colors. Um, here I have three different colors, three different colors. That's six different colors all together. And I thought each flower could have five petals. So that's why I got five of each, okay? Again, these are from the Dollar Tree. I also purchased a bag of Easter grass, and that is up to you if you want to use that or not. Uh, and it, the color doesn't really matter, but I, I, I decided I wanted to use the green. I also grabbed these um, Gerbera daisies. There's six on here, and I believe I want to make six flowers, possibly. So uh, I want to use this for the center. These flowers are going to be the center of my flowers. So. You could use that or you could get some eggs, get some yellow ones or whatever color you want your center of your, um, your flowers to be. I also grabbed these two rolls of uh, tulle. It's a glitter tulle right there. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be using these. I kinda want these to wrap around when I put the grass, kinda hold it onto the wreath. If wire doesn't help, then I'm going to be using this. So this is uh, something optional and the color really is optional. I went with this one because I thought I could see the green a little bit better through it and it has a little bit of a sparkle so I thought it would look pretty if I do end up using it. I also grabbed a roll of ribbon. This is three yards and uh, again I don't know if I'm going to use it and put a bow on my wreath but I grabbed it just in case and that's the pretty pattern on that. It has pretty much the colors that are on the little eggs, so I thought that would match perfectly. All right, so I'll be using my regular tools. I've got my glue gun, glue sticks here, got plenty of them. I've got some wire. This is a floral wire. It is a, I think it's a 22, or oh, it's a 24 gauge. And then I've got my scissors and wire cutters. I might use some other tool. I'll introduce it as I go along, but for now, this is it, so let's get to crafting. All right, so I'm gonna start by building the first flower and whatever I do with this one, I'm gonna do with the other ones. And again, I have six different colors and I ended up buying five packets so that I would have five of each color. So I'm just gonna start with this, uh, it's a purpley lavender, it's not a pink. Well, it's, it is a little bit of a pink color. So I'm gonna put these together like so and hot glue them. At first I thought four of them would be enough, but I feel like five makes more of that flower shape. Now, uh, this packet with this lavendery purple uh, has the yellow and the cream in there also. And I'm going to go ahead and skip those. I've saved those off to the side. Uh, and I'm going to go with this other package with the blue, this pale pink and green. And I will do all the flowers in those. So that'll give me four different flowers. Now, if I feel like I need an extra flower, a fifth one, I will go with the yellow. I don't think I'm going to go with the cream, uh, but we'll see. It all depends because maybe the cream uh, with the yellow flower in the center will look better than a yellow on yellow. Get what I'm saying? So for now, I'm gonna do four. All right, so to put them together, like I said, I'm just gonna hot glue them. So I need them to be in the position that I feel is right. And then just glue them 
in the little spots where they connect with each other. So I'm gonna put some glue right here. And this one connects with that one, like so. And this one connects right here on the side. This one I need glue on both sides. Where it meets up. Right there. And I'm just going to reach in with some more glue wherever else they might be touching. Okay, so I'm going to wait till this dries. I'm going to start building the other ones, let them dry, and then I'll come back and put a little bit more glue, maybe turn it around, put glue from underneath just to make sure everything's attached. So I'll just carefully and gently move this to the side and work on the others and I'll be back. All right, so I decided to go ahead and go with the cream, which is over here, instead of the yellow eggs uh, to create uh, flowers because I'm thinking that instead of six, maybe just five. Um, and the reason that I decided not on the yellow is because I'm gonna put the yellow flower in the middle and that kind of just takes away from noticing this yellow. So I'm just gonna go with the other five colors. Uh, but of course you can do that if, if you want to use that and maybe you want to use some little pom-poms in the center you can use yellow pom-poms or maybe even some brown ones uh, so that then you can use that yellow one instead of the cream or whatever other colors you want to use okay so here's my uh, flowers and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put them right in the middle here like I said so I'm gonna go ahead and pull I pull them all off of the little bush here so I happen to have uh, six here but I only need five now and I'm just gonna put some glue all the way around my flower here so it catches on somewhere onto my eggs here and there we go we have our little first egg flower just put all these flowers in the center and I'll be back once I've got that done well actually I'm gonna go ahead and go go to the wreath next okay just imagine these they're already glued on here one more over here See, they're already glued on <laughs> and they're done. All right, I'm gonna go come back with the wreath. Okay, so now I need to decide if I do wanna use my 18 inch, 18 inch wreath or the 14 inch wreath. Let's look at the 14 inch wreath first so you get an idea. Let's put these little flowers on here. Just gonna place them on here. I'm not gonna worry about, um, you know, if they're straight or what. Okay, so I have five flowers, and that's obviously too crowded, I think. But it looks really cute, so look at that. That actually looks really cute, you guys. I'm really liking that, actually. Uh, they're not that crowded, because if I put them, you know, kind of centered or even on the edge, just kind of outward, they fit in really well. And it's not so bad if I get them close to each other, because that's less coverage that I have to do of the actual wreath uh, underneath. Okay, so let's go, well not less coverage because I'm just gonna go ahead and cover the whole thing. Let's go ahead and put this aside and let's try the bigger wreath. All right, this is the 18 inch wreath. Let's put them on here. Try not to put these two together because the colors are way too similar. All right, this is how separated it all looks and that looks pretty good what do you think I like that so you know what I am gonna go ahead and use the 18 inch but as you saw on the 14 inch they work just fine if you're only doing five flowers or if you're gonna just do four okay but if you're gonna do six definitely you know if you're gonna use the yellow eggs to also make a flower and definitely use the 18 inch okay let's go ahead and prepare this so that then I can glue these flowers on here. And I wanna use that Easter grass. So let's figure out how that's gonna happen. All right, so I've got my Easter grass. I have two bags actually, but I think maybe one bag will be enough because look how much it, it, it expands. Uh, this is a plastic Easter grass. And there's also a paper one, so it's just your choice of what you wanna use. I mean, you can totally skip this and just wrap your wreath with some ribbon, which I think probably would be the better idea but I've already got this grass so we're gonna see how this works initially I thought I would wrap it around with some wire but I feel like I'd have to wrap it up really tight uh, because then you know 
some of these grasses are going to fall out. Not only that, but then you're going to see a lot of the wire. And what's the point? It's not going to look as pretty. So I think I am going to start with using this uh, tool because then I can just kind of wrap it around, kind of not so tight, but just wrap it around as I go and then be adding the grass on there and wrap. And it looks really pretty. You can still see the, the little grass through there. You can see the sparkle of the tool. So before we get started, let's go ahead and attach the tool so that it doesn't come off. And that's what it's called, tool. You want to call it tool or tool. I don't know, whatever you, however you want to pronounce it, that's up to you. But um, tool is a French word, so that is how it's pronounced. And that is how we say it in Spanish as well. And I've just always heard tool. Okay, so I'm sorry if it bothers anybody. But you know, people have different ways of saying things and they have different accents and we just accept. All right, we're gonna put this end edge here of the tool. We're gonna grab, gather it and we're gonna wire around it. Make it nice and tight around down there. Just go underneath and attach it. And I'm gonna attach it around this and the outer ring and wire it down really nice and tight. And then just get the ends of the wire and then wrap it on the next ring here or, or trim it off, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to wrap it around. If there's any little sharp edges, ends of the wire that I can't uh, fold down, then I'll get my wire cutters and I'll trim them. But everything's pretty flat on there. So I'm just going to wrap it one time like that so I can go ahead and get started. Get my little grass bundle. Put it on there and wrap. Now, if this gets gathered or you know folds over a little bit, that's okay. I'm trying not to, but I'm thinking I think that'll be fine if it does happen. Okay. Now pull it, not so tight. We're gonna grab another grass bundle, and you want to make sure that when you're wrapping, that it gets wrapped from behind as well as the front. You know, don't skip the back because you want to make sure that this doesn't fall through on the other side or it doesn't get easily pulled through. This one I can wrap it around twice because I got plenty of that grass on here. Okay, so as you're wrapping it around, don't worry about like little bits of grass like this. These we can either pull them out or trim them with our scissors, okay? I have two rolls of this, so I have plenty. So make sure you have at least a couple of rolls or a nice big roll. This is only, I think, three yards of tool. I forgot how many inches it says it is. Yeah, it's three yards. It says on there. It's a six inch wide by three yards. So make sure you get a couple of rolls just to be sure. Now, maybe one will be enough, but it all just depends on how closely you wrap things. Okay, I'm going to make my way all the way around. I am coming to the end of the um, wreath here. So I'm just going to grab a little more grass and I'm going to lift the previous bit of tool. Tuck some of this underneath there, fill it in, and then cover that last spot. And this is just one roll of tulle, and I'm at the end here. Let's see, where's the end? Right here. Okay, and so for me, one roll was enough to do this 18 inch. Gotta finish right here. So we're gonna bring it around, and I'm gonna turn it over so that I can then hot glue this down. So let's put some glue there and be very careful because you can burn yourself. So just hot glue it down and that's that. And we'll just let that dry and then we'll turn it around. I'm gonna trim off any little bits of grass that are popping out and that's it. So now I have some ribbon and I thought I'd do a bow. And now I'm wondering, do I even need a bow on this? Cause it's gonna be so pretty with these little flowers. But I'm gonna go ahead and do one. And I think I want some long tails hanging off. So I'm gonna cut it to about, uh, let me see. I'm gonna kind of compare that to when I usually measure 36 inches. This is maybe 30 inches. Okay, I'm gonna fold this and I'm gonna cut the ends, fold them in half from the fold up to the ends. Okay, so we end up with this, or you could cut it at an angle or just straight, however you want. I just think it looks pretty like that. Okay, so this is three yards, like I said, so whatever I have left over, I'm going to use to create a bow. But let me get some wire ready. There we go. So I 
I don't need this. All right, I'm going to make a center loop like that. Just a little loop, not too big, about that big. Let me compare it to my flower. Yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to pinch it right there. And then I'm going to twist my ribbon so that I have the pretty side up. So that you're always going to pinch and twist. So make your first loop the size you want it. And I want it about the size of the flower here. So there we go. Pinch. I've pinched my fabric. And now I'm going to twist it so I have the pretty side up. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I don't need to use this whole ribbon. Maybe just a little bit. Let's find out. Twist. Make your second loop. What I was doing earlier is I was bringing these two together to make sure that they were about the same size. And they are. So just keep them flat like that for now. Make your next loop and use that one on this side to measure. Pinch, twist. And then use this one to measure your next one. Pinch and twist. And then I'm going to separate these because I want to see how many, how much, you know, how that looks. So that's four loops. So let me do five like I have on the flowers. I think that's enough. Okay, so that's where I've decided to go ahead and stop. I'm going to go ahead and use my wire. I said I was going to use the rest of the ribbon, but you know what? I'm not. <laughs> I can change my mind. Okay, this wreath is being made as I go rather than... You know, me having an initial idea exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to push that in. Okay, so now that I've got my wire nice and tight, I can trim off of the ribbon. I have a little piece left over that I can use for another, just hang another uh, tail on here. It's still too long. Let's cut that off. Okay, so with the remainder of my wire that's coming off like that, the length that's coming out, I am going to twist that flat against my bow and that gives me like a little surface so that when I put hot glue on here and glue it down, see that? Just flatten it down, twirl it and flatten it down. And let's see how our bow looks. Let's take our loops out, fan them out. This was the center one. And now we can poof them so we can see how it looks. I normally don't poof it up until I've already glued it in place and that's going to go right about there there was a spot that I noticed was kind of skinny so I'm going to go over this little spot here and make sure I cover that so that can go right there this I'm going to take well, more or less the center I'm going to take another piece of wire a little one oops I need my wire cutters for that And I'm going to wrap it around that just so that, uh, you know, it stays gathered like so. And then I just flatten up this little piece of wire. Okay. This little piece of wire just fold it and flatten it up like that if you have, you know, too much length. Okay, we're going to take that and we're going to hot glue that to our wreath. So I'm going to put plenty of glue there. Put down the wire and some of the fabric so it gets glued down. And just push it to make sure that it gets attached. And then on top of that, and I'm going to put plenty of glue all the way around. And then I'm going to put my bow. And then just press that down onto there. Like that. Okay? And then we can, well, once it's all dry and everything, we can poof it up. But I'm just trying to give you an idea of what that looks like right now with a little little uh, hands hanging down and I thought I'd use you know this other leftover piece but you know what I think that's enough ribbon so I'm gonna save this for some other project you never know now all I have to do is let that dry and then we're gonna put a little loop on the back of our wreath which we should have done before I did this <laughs> uh, but again I'm gonna cut some wire and I'm gonna cut about I don't know 12 inches or so Okay, about 12 inches. And then we're going to fold it in half. I don't know if you can see it. I've got my wire here. We're going to fold it in half. Like that. And then we're just going to twist it. Make sure it gets all nice and twisted to itself. So it thickens it up. Or you can use a chenille stem. 
Okay. And then we're going to bring those ends together. And we're going to put our thumb or finger, whatever you want, in the side of it. And then create a loop. You know, we want to make sure that fits in there. Or if you're going to put it on a wreath hanger, then get your wreath hanger and, you know, wrap it around the end where it's supposed to slide on and then make it so that it fits around that and then, then tie it up. Okay, so it's tied up like that. And because the leftover bit that I have here is a little long, I'm just going to fold it up into itself because our wreath is not very wide, the, the, the area where we're going to glue it down. Okay, so I'm going to use all this. Now, when I, I'm going to fold this up a little bit like that. Okay, fold that up. And this little part here is going to get glued to the back of the wreath. And you're going to let that dry and then you you can then later bend this however you need and so that then you can hang it on a nail or a tack or something on a wall so that or on your door whatever you happen to have a little command strip whatever you have and then you can just hang your wreath like that okay so i'll go ahead and get my wreath here's my bow this is why i don't poof my bow till the end because it gets squished okay so I'm going to go opposite of my bow, and this is where this is going to get glued down to. And you want to push it down in there, and hopefully the glue will also seep in to grab the wires, you know, of the rings that are, you know, wrapped up in there. So put plenty of glue so it seeps in, and just put lots of it. Okay, let that dry, and if you need more, put more on top. Don't layer it too, too much because then it takes forever to dry. And then you're just melting what's already on there. So just wait, and then add more glue. And I'll be back once that's all completely dry, and we're gonna put our flowers on there. All right, so now I'm just poofing up my little bow so that I know how much space it takes, so then I can go ahead and put my flowers in different locations on my wreath. And any which way, it doesn't really matter. I just don't want to put these two next to each other because, like I said before, the colors are a little too similar. All right, so now because we have a bow, you know, the, these flowers are a little bit closer together and it kind of, you know, uh, closes up much, much of the gap. So I really like this. Um, now, if you were going to do it on a smaller wreath, like I said before, these will fit nice and tight, but you won't have space for a bow. So either you're going to do less flowers and put a bow or just do the, the flowers and don't worry about putting a bow or you could just put little bows somewhere between them with a with a thinner ribbon okay so this is more or less where I want them so I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing this one is gonna go directly straight up on here so I know where that's gonna go and I know that right here is where it's gonna touch my wreath so again I want to put plenty of glue so that it stays on there you see what catches right there and be careful when you're pushing it down you don't want to break it so that then these things come apart okay all right so i'll be back once all this is put together all right everyone i have completed in my wreath as you can see hanging here and you guys i really enjoyed putting this wreath together i hope it's something that you will try because it was really easy it did take a little bit of time you know the drying process uh but i i thought it was well worth it so I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up and I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up and leave a kind comment down below and let me know what do you think of this project. I love it, like I said. <laughs> Alright everyone, if this is your first time watching or if you've been watching but you're not subscribed, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe uh, to my videos. I'm going to ask you for a like and I'm going to ask you for a quick little comment, even if it's just to say hello. All right, so hit that red button and then choose to all your notifications because you want to get notified as soon as I upload a video. And uh, I do plan on having, I think, a couple more Easter uh, ideas. But if you have something that you want to suggest, you can leave that also in the comments or for any other occasion. That's perfectly fine. All right, everyone, I want to thank everybody for watching, whether you're subscribed or not. Thank you for supporting my channel. And as always, enjoy. Oh,